Okay, so I received a thousand dollar challenge from a guy that I know he will not um, honor because he's not a man of, of honor. He calls himself a Bible teacher or whatever, and he's already totally copped out after I gave him the Bible verses in question. But here's the thousand dollar question. Um, he says uh, he'll give me a thousand dollars to the charity of my choosing. If I can show him just one verse about a seven-year tribulation, he maintains there is no such thing as a seven-year tribulation. I'm just making that up. So um, my reply was, ready? Okay, here goes. Scripture number one. Daniel 9 27 is where the angel Gabriel gives Daniel a prophecy concerning 70 weeks of years. In that verse, he talks about a week, a grouping of seven as a Hebraism but talks about a particular event, an abomination that makes desolate. Now, flash forward to Matthew 24, 9. Jesus says, Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. So notice the Jews are told they will be delivered to desolation. But let's keep going to confirm what this is, as context is very important, and you will agree. Verse 15 we confirm Daniel's week of years, and it is in the land of Judea, etc., where Jesus says, and I quote, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. So, but we're not finished yet, okay? So we have confirmed a week of years and that Daniel's middle of the week is the abomination of desolation and that Jesus confirms this here. So now to confirm the timing of it. So many of my all-male friends will try to say this is not future, but that's all happened in 70 AD. We can confirm the when of the timing by continuing in the context of Jesus' sermon. Um, scroll down quickly to verse 29. You can read through. Um, just to check the flow and the context, make sure it's still in context. But here's what it says, starting verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now, back to verse 16, 15, 16, Jesus is speaking about the tribulation. And then he says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then... All the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming out of the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So that's eight things I ticked off with my fingers there. So looking up, starting at verse 29, about that particular tribulation, Jesus tells us what happens immediately after. If you look up the word immediately in the Greek, you know what it means? It means immediately, right away, without delay. That's the word. So immediately after the tribulation that he's speaking about, these eight things happen. Um, did any of those eight very significant things, including the coming of the Son of Man with all that racket, etc., happen in 70 AD? I think both Bible and history confirms these eight things did not happen immediately, and in fact, we're still waiting. Um, therefore, it's future. So, and then I put um, in here, in, in my letter back to him, would you like further confirmation that it's future? Because I sort of glossed over verse 21. So we can back up a little bit to verse 21. It says, for then there will be great tribulations such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no no, nor ever shall be. So what Jesus is saying about the tribulation time here in the context is that it will be so horrible, there will not ever be, have been any such a, a great horrific thing in tribulation um, before, leading up to this time. Never before has there been anything so horrible. And that there will never come a worse time, no, nor ever shall be. So it will be the worst time in history. So, to conclude, this can't be 70 AD, or even any time since, because both world wars 
were greater tribulation than 70 AD on every measurable scale. So again, Daniel 9.27, Gabriel gives us a week. Jesus confirms this week in Matthew 24. And in Revelation, it plays uh, the entire scenario out um, with uh, in chapters 13 and 14, this great tribulation, the abomination of desolation in particular, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel. It's played out in chapters 13 and 14 in that scenario of the desecration in the middle of the week. Uh, so we know this man of sin, a.k.a. Antichrist, is the fellow um, as well because Paul in 2 Thessalonians 2 restates his activities in the same way with him standing in the temple and declaring himself God. Um, oh, and the, the span of seven years also, to confirm further that it's seven years during this tribulation period. Um, so I almost forgot that too. So when we visit chapters 11, 12, and 13, we confirm Daniel's week of years with the restating in terms of events in the first half of Revelation is 1260 days. And from the middle um, to the conclusion, out another 1260 days. That's seven years. Uh, also, um, from the middle forward, we're told it's going to be 42 months. And so 42 months and 42 months, that's seven years. And to add to that, we're also told concerning the second half, uh, the Great Tribulation period here, that it'll be a time, times, and half a time, making that 3.5 years, which is half of seven last time I checked. So anyway, he didn't like any of that. I don't know what I'm talking about and all this kind of stuff, and, and I'll never understand, and things like this, and, and I'm, I'm not getting my $1,000. So anyway, that's the $1,000 challenge I got, and that's, that's the way my week's gone so far. So um, anyway, so um, tell me, how's your week been? <laughs>